We're gonna play a little bit of RimWorld, and I'm gonna show you guys what the game is about if you've never seen it before. And you can tell me if you think that this is going to be a good game that we should continue to stream past today. But at least for the next hour, why don't we take a trip into the Rim World as we begin a new colony. So Rim World is a colony management survival game. You have colonists who land on a planet. You have to keep them alive and build a spaceship to leave while you're constantly being attacked and all that good stuff. If you're going to play RimWorld, play Dwarf Fortress instead. I will play Dwarf Fortress once the game comes out on Steam and it gets fucking control updates because the control scheme in that game is just fucking horrifyingly bad. Um, but I actually, I like the idea behind Dwarf Fortress and the execution is nice from the gameplay, the game mechanic perspective, but... Um, mechanically and via controlling it, it, it's actually just horrendously bad and it needs to be completely updated. But if it, if it does, if they do that for Steam, I'll give it a shot. But anyways, we're going to manage a colony here. We're going to see if this is a game that we're going to be playing more of. We're going to start a colony and we're just going to do the basic experience. Crash landed. The three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown world. We get to start with three people chosen from eight. We have random equipment. It's not random. It's actually very specifically given to you. You're given specific equipment and you have to try to survive with this equipment. We're going to take it. We're going to go Cassandra savage because it's funny we're gonna go reload anytime that way if i make like a horrible horrible mistake i can reload it although if you go commitment then it's basically iron man and we are going to make the able abler yeah there you go the abler clan cc and generate our own brand new world so you start the game by killing five people you know, if you look at it that way, cheese and geese, you do start the game by leaving five people behind, but not really. It's just you you roll stats. If you've ever, ever played, like, an early DOS or early Windows D&D-based game, like Eye of the Beholster or even Baldur's Gate, we re-roll. We re roll stats for our characters. But the game does it all automatically, and you can't fudge numbers at all. <clears throat> but, um, you know, every character, every colonist, let's say. I have the beholster. <laughs> Too much gungeon. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But every colonist has their own stats and whatnot. Um, so we're going to select a random site. We have selected a boreal forest relatively close to pirates and a couple of like traders and whatnot. We're just going to immediately say next and we have random characters that have been rolled for us. April, a ranch owner, incapable of dumb later, but a 10 stat in animals and a nine stat in into, into intellectual. Nix, a jailbird, incapable of caring, so medical, and social, but very good Shooting, melee, cooking, plants, animal. And we get Truman, the medieval lord, who has asthma, incapable of dumb labor. Ooh, two people incapable of dumb, lab dumb labor and incapable of skill labored. So they can't construct, mine, cook, grow crops, or craft. They can only do art animals, shoot people, and do social. This is a very bad person, but we have other people that we can kind of slot in or out. We can take three people that we choose. We could go for Isamu, the bodyguard, who's a cannibal, a careful shooter. They take longer to shoot, but they are more accurate or volatile. They're more likely to have a mental break. All right. Well, you know, and you can you can go through the stats and check them all out. We could take. Kaloon, who's neurotic. They work faster, but they're easier to break. 
A transhumanist, they feel like they want b body upgrades. And beautiful. They're also very good intellectual, social, intellectual being uh, research, I believe. Researching and drug synthesis. Um, so not a very good set of colonists. Um, you could also randomize if you want. So if we don't want this guy, we could randomize. And we could randomize as, as much as we want until we get exactly the right combination. Or if you just want to be super random about it, you could just do that. But no, we're just going to take one of the other people who have already been randomly created for us. Because why not? We'll take the... Uh... Ugh. Kind Steadfast. Yeah, let's go with Shun the Drifter, because he has no incapable of. He can he can do literally everything. He also has a brother, Isamu, the bodyguard, but he has already been re-rolled. So, yeah, let's go with these three people, and we'll start our our run here. April, Nix, and Shun. Or if we wanted to, crap, I re-rolled him. <laughs> Wait, if I go back, will I get them back? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> April, where'd you go? Oh, she's gone forever. She's she's been re-rolled into oblivion. Um Well, I really didn't mean to do that. I, I click on the wrong button is actually what happened there. What I wanted to do is I wanted to click on the I, which would let me rename the unit and I could name them after people from chat, but Oh did I change my title? I think I changed my title. I definitely did. I, I did it correctly this time. He's a wimp. I don't want a wimp. You know, you could you could very easily re-roll forever, and then by re-rolling forever, just end up getting nothing done. So we're just going to accept these colonists. Shjur, incapable of none. A wreckage explorer in a cave world illuminator. You are going to be... Sanfu. I don't know anything about you, Sanfu, but you're that guy now. Oh, you know what? I can just rename him from here. All right, so you're Sanfu. Nyx, female colonist, age 37, vat-grown soldier, and a jailbird. Who's a, who's a, who is a soldier? Let's go with, uh, let's go with Cheb. There you go, Cheb. And Shun Truman. Age 59, Herb World Urchin. Ancient and deep industrial cityscapes bursting with humanity and poison. Shun grew up in the dark, unwanted reaches of such a place he had to fight for every scrap of food. So I'm thinking more of like a Blade Runner type of world. And he's a drifter. Who's a drifter in chat? You know, actually, hold up. Cheb is the drifter because he's, he's never here in chat. And uh, our female colonist who's a vat-grown soldier you're going to be the ultimate noob. You're ultimate. Oh, that doesn't fit. No, actually, maybe it does fit. It does fit. I think. Yes. It does. Okay. Okay, there you go. You are, you're ultimate. You've been changed. And uh, let's start. Ultimate new bet. That's a very good point. We could change it. We can change the names whenever we want. So, we, uh, arrive on this world. With all, all, of, our, all of our stuff. And our dog, Justin! <laughs> Justin the dog. Um, man, there's just a giant swamp in the middle of this area, which is absolutely horrible. Also, there's barely any mountains. So, we've got Ultimate Noob, Sanfu, Justin, and Cheb. We have some resources. We have medicine, a flak vest. Who is our best combat person? Oh, definitely ultimate noob, the vat grown soldier. You're gonna wear the vest. You're also gonna pick up the gun. Takes you a minute to put it on because it is a, a, a vest. You're gonna equip the gun. You're gonna equip the advanced helmet. And also the advanced, oh, you threw up. <laughs> I guess you do have, um, what is it, cryo sickness right now? Please stop throwing up. How long does it take you to empty your lungs? There you go. Now you've got basically armor on. And we have Cheb, 
and sand food. Cheb has an eight and a passion for melee. So you're gonna pick up the knife. Sand Fu, you have a two in shooting. You're just gonna pick up the standard bolt action rifle. I think having the revolver on Ultimate Noob is better because it's, it's it's a powerful weapon. Uh, there's also just a little bit of wood and steel here, weirdly enough. We're gonna make sure that we can pick this up by making it not disallowed. And we have to start building immediately. We have to start building fortifications. There is a small pseudo structure here. We could just take this for ourselves. I can just click N on all of the, actually I can do it from here. I can just claim all of these tiles. Now they're mine and I can build off of them. I can build a wooden wall, silver wall, steel wall. I'd rather just build wood because it's a, a cheap material. We can build a door and there we go. We have our first little building here. Now, our colonists will have to walk over here to do the constructions. We also need more wood at some point, so we're going to queue up some chopping order for the wood. Last thing we need to do is make a stockpile, which is where our colonists will pull material. So if we make the stockpile right out here and we say, hey, all of this stuff is allowed in the stockpile, then they will start hauling all of this stuff over there at some point. So we have 50 meals, 500 silver, 300 silver, 30 components, 30 medicine. There's actually more steel and more wood over here, which is pretty awesome. And if we just let them do their thing, you know, we can see what they're doing. They're starting to haul all the materials over, chop wood. Can you name the dog? We can definitely name the dogs. You know what, Hades, you can be the dog. Where, where's, where's the dog? There's Justin. Hey, Justin. Um, you are now going to be... Can I name the dog? I might not be able to name the dog. He might just be Justin forever. You know what? He's Justin. What are you proficient in? Okay, so let's take another look at our characters. Ultimate noob, vat grown soldier, good at combat, good at animals, cooking, planting. Everything else is pretty low. Cheb, our herb world urchin, good at researching, melee, plants and animals, cooking, a little bit of crafting, horrible at art, medical, social, and mining. Sanfu, very good at researching, good at animals, art, and mining. So we don't really have a good medic. In fact, all of our medi medical personnel are at zero. We don't really have a good crafter. Um, oh my god, I keep... If you click off of it, the entire thing just goes away. And we don't really have a good constructionist. Cheb is our constructionist. They have the highest stats. And you can see that they're already like focusing on it. They're like, I'm good at constructing. I'm gonna go construct. So we've built our first little building here. Let's build some beds so that we're not sleeping on the ground. We can also build a animal box for our dog. He's gonna go right there in the corner. Build a lamp, a torch lamp, and let's build a table and a couple of stools to sit on so that they can eat their meals and just kind of let things go. Cheb is, is doing his construction. Ultimate Noob is still chopping down trees. And Sanfu is doing the hauling. So they, they've they all kind of taken a job and have started to do it. But I think it might be based off of what they are best at. So Ultimate Noob can't construct. So he's doing the, the uh, cutting of the trees. And Sanfu could cut trees, but he's decided not to because he's probably you know, Ultimate Noob is better at it. So he's decided he's he's doing hauling, so he's moving all the material down here. I didn't name the dog. I don't think you can name the dog. But the dog does get a, a sweet little box. We can build better dog boxes in the future, but for right now, this is all we, all we can really do. So everyone's doing their thing. Need recreation activity. We have to make sure that we build things to keep our units busy. So what we're gonna do is that's the wrong tab. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to recreation and build a horseshoe pin, which allows, I mean, it lets them play horseshoes. So we'll put it there. We could also build a chess table, which we might as well do. And I'll build another stool so that they can sit at the table 
building is here. There we go. And Cheb will go build that in a minute. Right now, they're just relaxing socially. Cheb and Ultimate Noob, they're falling in love. Wait, what? <laughs> Already? Cheb charmed Ultimate Noob by drawing attention to his own abilities. Ultimate Noob rejected the advance. Oh, Cheb. I'm sorry. Rebuffed by Ultimate Noob, minus five mood. <laughs> <laughs> Already a little romance is brewing. You know, we're on it. We gotta, we gotta start repopulating. Not the world, because there's other people on the world. I mean, we have seen the where they are, but. Haha, <laughs> get wrecked. So I'm gonna do something else really quickly here. I'm gonna make another stockpile. And inside of this stockpile, I'm gonna put things that are important. Because... Outside, the rain, the elements can damage equipment, some equipment, like raw steel and silver, that doesn't matter. But components, medicine, food, even wood will go bad outside, but not inside. So I'm going to make a little stockpile here for food and medicine explicitly, because I want that stuff to last basically forever. I'll also make it for apparel so that they move the pants in. And I'm going to tell Cheb to do it right now. I'm going to say, hey move. Um, if we make this higher priority, then we can do it. Yes? No? Maybe so? Yeah, we can. So we can say, once he's done with the construction. Oh, he's doing it automatically. Perfect. We want the valuable stuff to be inside if it's damageable, and the, the medicine could definitely be damaged. I didn't even think the possibility of romance in this game existed. It definitely does. When you're so bad, even Ultimate Noob rejects you. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to build my chess table here. Shut up. <laughs> well, the chess table has been completed. It is of, of normal quality, as is everything else. You're an average constructor. The dog has decided to sleep outside. Uh, I guess we have to assign the dog? Or maybe the dog is just dumb. The dog is obedient and trained, and Ultimate Noob is his master. But why is the dog not sleeping in the bed? I don't know. Hmm. We should also, it's nighttime, everyone's asleep. Also make sure that components go in the, uh, in the new stockpile we've created because the components will go bad and they're very rare. And also, while uh, everybody's asleep, we could do some construction ordering. We could say, hey, we got to build some stuff. So we'll build another room. We'll uh, build a door. And what's gonna, what's this room going to be? This room is going to be a... Well, actually, hold on. I want to move the door a little bit. The door there. We're going to build a cooler to store food, because we're going to need a lot of food, especially if we grow the colony. We're going to need food to keep everyone alive, and we need to keep the food cool so that it stays fresh. If the cool food gets too warm, it'll start going bad and be a waste. We don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is going to build a couple of rooms here. We're going to put the food in this left room. This is probably not how I, how I would build it, but this is how we're going to build it now. This is going to be the freezer. We're gonna let everyone wake up. We're gonna build a stove. Game's auto-saving. We're gonna build a chair for the stove. We can also make this a butcher's room as well so that when we end up having animals, we can butcher them for their meats. We'll do it all in the same room, just to kind of save on space. So we'll put a torch lamp in here so that they can see what they're doing. We'll go to temperature cooler and we will build a cooler in the freezer now we don't have power yet but we should have enough supplies to build a wind turbine or generator the wind turbine will go what the heck was that the lynx killed a rat in the distance oh dude there's food why is there just food over here that's strange um but we can build a uh, a wind turbine and by building this wind turbine, we will have access to plenty of power. So we'll build a wind turbine, build a couple of 
power conduits just to make sure that it connects, and then everyone should just, again, go do their thing. I, li I like having the uh, work order on automatic. They seem to prioritize things correctly without having to manually do it. Crap. No, no, no. Clear all. We only want food in the freezer. So here, in this temporary stockpile, we're gonna say no food. And in the freezer, we want this to be priority, priority critical, because all food needs to be hauled into here basically immediately, because it has to be, be maintained fresh. So, the wind turbine has been constructed. It's been, it's blocked by a tree currently, so what we need to do is uh, cut all of these trees out of the way so that the wind turbine can, can activate. If you have a tall structure in front of or behind the turbine, it uh, stops it from operating. But what we can do is we can actually reuse the space. We can't build buildings, but we can always plant crops. So if we plant crops, in front of and behind the wind turbine, it shouldn't matter. Although there's a lot of rocks here, now that I, th I think about it. Tough or rough sandstone. You know, this is not a good place for, uh, <laughs> for crop generation. We'll do that out front. You know what we could do? Let's build another wind tur turbine somewhere, like right here, out front. And then next to this one, we can grow some crops. Because there's there's actual soil here, not rocks. So we can grow potatoes and rice, just so we have some food going on. Make sure to... Cut. Ooh, what the heck? These are definitely not connected. We'll make sure that the... Everything is connected. We don't need these two power conduits to be here. Cheb failed while constructing cooler. Some resources have been wasted. Cheb, no! Yeah, I don't know why this wasn't connected. I guess I moved it. Minor break risk. Cheb. He's playing horseshoes. Disturbed sleep. Rebuffed by ultimate noob. Unsightly environment. Minor pain. Darkness. Awful barracks. Greedy for an impressive rune room. Well, is this barracks not good enough? We just crash landed on a planet. You're already complaining. Jesus. So what happened to that rat? Did we do anything with the rat yet? Oh, the reason why we haven't done anything with any animals yet is because, or any butchering, is we need to add a bill, butcher creature, do it forever. And at the fueled stove, let's add a bill saying cook meals, do until you have 10. And those will now go forever. If we have food, it'll be turned into a meal. If we have a corpse, it'll be turned into, well, food. Maybe if my life didn't suck. I guess that's a good point. You are in a bad spot. So everyone's getting hungry. Mediocre barracks. Ultimate Noob's being fi is, is fine though. Justin's master gives him plus five mood. He likes having his dog around. He's also, he's, he's really happy to be planting. Planting five, animal six. He, he really likes planting, apparently. Who knew? Minor passion for my work. Sanfu is still asleep. I mean, it is 6 a.m. You know, it's still... Good enough time to be asleep. Yo, build a freaking cooler. There we go. So now that the cooler's been constructed, it's currently set to 70 Fahrenheit. Nah, 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 nah. Set it to... You know, 20 Fahrenheit, which is like negative 10 C. Just to make sure that this room gets cool enough that the food doesn't go bad. Now the packaged survival meals, they won't go bad ever because they're basically MREs. But there we go. Now you can in the bottom right corner, right about here, you can see indoors 23. It's freezing. So now any food that goes in there will be chilled forever. Okay. Is it just me or is the sound of clicking actually really nice? You mean this? Click, 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 click. Uh, so what happened to that rat? I guess maybe it was completely eaten. There are animals here. We could uh, hunt any of these that we want. In fact, we have colonists idle. Why don't we 
give a hunting order and we'll see who fulfills that. Probably Ultimate Noob. They are our best hunter. They're our, our best shooter as well because they are a, uh, a genetically engineered soldier, basically. So we'll take a look at the wildlife. There's a bunch of elks. Oh my God, there's like six of them. We're gonna hunt all of them. There's nine of them. That's so good. Where are they in relation to us? Oh, there he goes. Hunting elk. Let's watch the majestic hunter slowly approach his target and then shoot at it with a 45 Magnum. Help if you could, oh, he hit one. 45% chance of hitting. The elk has a gunshot wound and is slowly bleeding, but they're not in danger of dying yet. Oh, good shot. The elk is gonna die in 21 hours due to blood loss. <laughs> 12 hours, 10 hours, eight hours. Look at the majestic hunt. Nature at its finest right here. The, the circle of life. You accidentally shot another one. I mean, to be fair, we're gonna be hunting them both. Oh, you've changed targets actually. There's also a turkey. Let's make sure we hunt this turkey. Oh, now you've changed targets back. I mean, to be fair, you crash landed on, you shot him in the eyeball. To be fair, you crash landed on a planet with a gun, you know, I would use that to hunt. Yo, nice shot. So now we have a, a manimal here. Oh, I can't, I wanted to look at that. I want to look at the, the kill log there, but he's going to bring it back. It's hauling it all the way back. It was like a full day to hunt this frickin' uh, elk here. But we also got 60 leather and two stacks of 75 plus 30 food. That's a lot of food. It's 10 per meal, so that's, that's like... No, okay, he doesn't have uh, meat in his hand. That's uh, 18 meals worth of food. That's a lot of food. That's pretty good. We also have a visitor. Jaredon, equipped with a pump shotgun. He's just visiting, he's just having fun, saying hi. Ultimate Noob is going out for uh, another hunt. There's also a bunch of steel here. Let's make sure that gets hauled in. <laughs> it's trying to run away. Oh, Elk Revenge, it got pissed off. It's chasing him down. Oh, it's, uh, it's actually fighting him. Who else has a gun? Sandfood, you, you have a gun. You're, you're gonna come help. Uh, it's going for you. Run. It got him. He's been bruised. Cheb, you, you have a knife. Come on. We're gonna, we're gonna fight this elf hand to hand if we have to. Run towards the base, you fool. He shot him. The elk's gonna die in five hours. I need you to melee this elk to death. He's still shooting too. Okay, okay, turn around and shoot him. Nice job, nice shot. All that for a bruise? Yo, that's worth it. That's a lot of meat right there. Go, uh, go hunt this elk and finish him off. We've done it. We might as well haul the steel back if you're going back to base. <laughs> um, okay, so we got some more, some more meat stuffs. You know, just freaking butcher him too. Bring him back. Gotta freaking tell you guys what to do all the time. Also, our dog is asleep in the cooler. That doesn't seem like a very good thing though because isn't the dog gonna freeze to death? He's not cold. I guess the dog can live in 22 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. Why are you, oh, you're, you're butchering. No, go to sleep, go to sleep. One of the elk must have bled out and died. Get out of my house. 
he, he used my table to eat. <laughs> so ultimate noob is um, bruised, and that's it. We could have someone tend to the injury. However, right now they're going to use medicine to do it. It's a it's a bruise. Medicine is expensive, extremely expensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say everyone can only get herbal medicine instead of the most expensive medicine that we have. Then tend to him just to patch up the bruise. Cuz I don't I, I don't want to spend medicine on that. That's extremely overkill. Like you save medicine for like life killing infections and stuff like that. Since it looks like you'll be here a while, Cheb thinks that you should give your faction a name. What should your faction be called? Also, we should give the settlement a name. What what should the settlement be called? Well, chat, what do you think it should be called? Confederation of He Habo and Groob were the names that we were given. We could randomize the fun campsite. <laughs> The fun campsite, huh? The Constitutional Covenant of Finan. TDO Strong Treaty. Mater Treaty. Coalition of Eden. Confederacy of North. Foror Notbium. Joni Act's Kingdom. Uh, I'm not gonna call it that Joni Act. Abania Clancyland. <laughs> I like that, but that's a little too, uh to on the nose. I like fun campsite. <laughs> the cult of the cold dog. All right, you know what? The cult of the cold dog. There we go. It's been done. So now if we let everyone kind of do their own thing. Oh, what? Cheb and Sanfu have gotten food poisoning. Simple meal, cause incompetent cook. Who's our cook? Well, it's either Cheb or Ultimate Noob. One of them is cooked incompetently. And now they're both gonna be like really slow and vomiting everywhere. Although, I don't want you guys to have bed rest. You don't need it. Get up and do some work. Plant crops if you have to. You know what? No, stay here. Plant crops. Oh, you're playing horseshoes. That's acceptable. I, I just don't want them to run off, fall unconscious, and then have to have someone go run over there and, and save them. What we could do, it... Hauling steel, butchering. That's acceptable. Uh, what we could... You're hunting. That's that's worth the risk. What we can also do is um, harvest these berry bushes, get a little bit of more food. Let's go check out the hunt. I, I love zooming in on someone and hearing BAM BAM BAM! This elk is getting revenge though. Oh no. We gotta go save him again. Run! Melee him to death. Oh man, Sanfu is so far away. But if Cheb melees the elk, that should take the aggro. And then we can just kind of stand at a distance and shoot it with a 100% uh, chance of being shot. Yo, Sanfu, we don't need you anymore. This elk is going down. Look at Cheb tanking like a freaking pro. He got knocked unconscious. <laughs> All right. Uh, how? He ripped your toe off and you also have food poisoning, so you fell unconscious from the pain. Well, you know, you can't win them all. Rescue Cheb, please. You know what? No hunting. Sanfu, uh, what are you doing? Hauling steel? Actually, you know, you know, we'll have him pick up his knife later. It's a good knife though. Mad rat, a local ma rat has gone mad. It will attack everyone it sees. This is one of those, you know, random events in the game. There's also a dead squirrel in the tree. What? You know, this is one of the random events in the game. Random stuff can happen, this is one of them. We have a mad rat on our tail. Uh, can you shoot this rat? Yes, you can. 3% chance, 3.5, 5, 7, 14, 20? Please melee attack the dead rat. 
for the mad rat. I'm sure he can handle a rat. Okay, good job. He bit you. Hollis. <sighs> no one does any freaking hauling around here. You're not a cook, so you can't. Okay, you know what? Hold up. In the freezer, also store corpses. Now can you haul the rat? Thank you. I want that mad rat corpse in case, oh, he's throwing up food poisoning. I want that rat corpse in case we can, you know, get some mad rat disease in our food chain. Butchering, no, treat it his toe. <laughs> he's gonna die in a whole day from his toe bleeding. Ugh, okay, Jeb, get medicine. Oh, you're not a doctor. Sanfu is the only doctor. But you're all, you all suck equally at doctoring. Oh, you can't doctor. You actually cannot be a doctor. All right, we have to wait for Sanfu to get here. There he goes. Butcher the rat. Now. I cannot prioritize, we'll never do doctoring. Sanfu, your ultimate noob. Where's Sanfu? Oh, he was he was throwing up. <laughs> He's so slow because of his uh, his freaking uh, uh, food poisoning. I'm gonna. I'm, oh god, he's throwing up again. I'm not gonna let him die to a toe infection. It's not gonna happen. How's, how are you looking? Dead in 18 hours. Blood loss moderate. Man, he's freaking dying very quick here. So I'm gonna use one medicine to make sure that his his toe is. No, oh, he threw up on the medicine. <laughs> I want to use one medicine to make sure that this guy doesn't have like a massive infection when we heal his his bleeding toe. Come on, there we go. Now you don't get medicine anymore. Tend to him. Treat his bite scar and his food poisoning. But his right little toe is destroyed. And now he's back up and walking. Major break risk. Oh, you know, he's probably just hungry. Yeah, he's got malnutrition. He was out for so long, it's been like half a day. Ugh. The elk struck Cheb in his right little toe. <laughs> Ugh. You know, maybe just, you know, don't stand there and get your toe chopped off. How about that? You ever think about that? All right, now he's gonna go to sleep because he is very tired. This wouldn't have happened if I was pilot says cheese and geese. Sanfu is fully healed. What was your problem? I don't know. All right, you got bit by the rat, I remember now. So look how much, we have a ton of food. We have 355 elk meat, 20 rat meat, 14 squirrel meat. We're not gonna starve anytime soon, and because we have a freezer, all of this food will not spoil, even the meals that we're cooking right now. Ultimate Noob is gonna do a little bit more sewing, just so we have some replenishable food. Cheb is, has gone out and grabbed a, an elk. He still has a bite scar, a bruise, a little bit of blood loss, but he's doing butchering. Making sure that we have plenty of meat. It's only spring, we have a lot of time to, to stock up on food and stuff. A meteorite has landed. It's full of jade! What? <laughs> Where is this? It's relatively close, we don't need jade, but we just had a gem meteorite strike the ground. That's incredible. Keep me alive in my dog or else I'll kill you. How? You'll be dead. You can't kill me. You'll be dead! Compacted machinery. Some uh, rocks that we could mine if we wanted to. Ultimate noob is, is going to butcher another elk, it seems like. There's another dead elk up here, too. I'm gonna put you back on hunting. I, I like the idea of hunting all these elk right now while they're on the map, because we're getting a lot of meat. 
There's also a spaceship chunk here. We can send someone up here there to deconstruct it and it gives us uh, components and steel, I think. There's also more turkeys, we'll hunt those as well. Dude, having a crack shot with that revolver is really nice. As long as they can hit. Yeah, crack shot. <laughs> Can't hit anything, apparently. 54% chance. I mean, that's pretty decent. And most of the time, the elk don't fight back. They only fight back rarely. So we need batteries and defenses. That's what the uh, game is telling me that we need here. We can build sandbags, which we can hide behind in a firefight, and spike traps, which might... It's summer. Which might um, allow us to get a kill if it hits an enemy. What we would like to do, I think, is build like a giant wall around the base with one entrance and then put traps in there. So I'm thinking about it and I'm like, we could do that. Nobody's cleaning yet. There's so much blood and guts everywhere. And the dog is still not sleeping in the bed. How do I freaking say, go to the bed? Animals. Master is ultimate noob. You've bonded to him. I could slaughter you. Go, go to bed. Go to bed. Go. I don't know. I don't know how to assign the animal to the bed. He's just on the floor. It would be more comfortable. It's your own box. Ugh. Yo, look at all the food. 780 elk meat. And there's another elk there. Yo. Hunting has been the smartest thing we've ever done. What the fuck? Oh, it was a lynx killing a rat. I'll take the rat. Oh, he's gone. He ate the entire rat. Makes sense. He's a cat. Oh, and also there's a, um, a knife there. Yo, Cheb, wake up. Get your knife back. I want you to have that. That's going to be important. 760 elk meat, 900, we have like 100 food in meat right now, that's amazing. But if the freezer ever goes out, that stuff spoils very quickly because it's raw meat. Um, so let's quickly build some security. Let's build a couple of sandbags. Just in case we get into a firefight, I want to have them around, and uh, we'll also put a couple of traps next to the bags in case, like, melee units want, want to rush us down a little bit. We'll just kind of... Oh! It's a raid! A group of pirates from the Shadow Wolves have arrived nearby. They will prepare for a while and then attack, prepare a defense, or attack them prematurely. It's one dude with a club. I am not worried in any way. Dude, there's even more steel here. That's amazing. Gotta like look at the map and see if there's anything else that we're missing. Uh, so one dude with a club. Cole, the blacksmith. Yeah, I mean he doesn't he doesn't really worry me. He's got a six in melee. He's a hard worker and he has bloodlust. He's also an alcohol addict with a large tolerance. <laughs> One dude with a club, it's clobber in time. Okay, he's beginning his assault. All right, everyone, wake up. Ultimate Doom, where are you? I need you. You're a crack shot, my dude. All right, we're going to hide behind our sandbags. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to draft everybody so we can manually control them. We're going to go meet Ultimate Noob in combat because uh, Ultimate Noob is the best soldier ever. So we're just going to meet up here. And then we're just gonna we're just gonna kill this guy unless he lights my house on fire. I don't think that's gonna happen though. Okay, shoot him, Jeb. You stand up front because you have a knife. Now we're gonna back up a little bit. Wait for Ultimate Noob to get here. He's my crack shot, man. I need him. I need him. We've got the di we got the diamond formation. Get him. 
Kill Cole! We got him. Let's take a look at the damage. Cheb did get hit there. He's got a cracked tibia and a bruised leg and a bruised torso. He, he got punched and hit with the club. But dude, that's not bad. We also got, a, got his club and we got his beer! Yo, we can have a drink. Crack open the cold one, boys. Ah, just a nice day of killing. Crack open a cold one. Ah. Butcher, he's not dead actually. So Cole here is alive. He's in shock. He has a bruised torso, a gunshot, a gunshot, a bruise, a crack, a gunshot, a gunshot, and a stab. He'll be dead in five hours. But what we can do is we can just give him like a crappy sleeping spot, say that that's for prisoners, and say, hey, why don't we uh, capture this guy? Haul that, haul that. You're gonna hunt some elks? I mean, you know, if you really want, go ahead. It is like 11 p.m. But you're not, you're awake, because I had to wake you up for the fight. So we're gonna capture this guy. What was that sound? We're just gonna put him next to the uh, the stove. We'll treat his, his wounds a little bit. He has a 58% difficulty in being recruited to our side and 20 resistance. Resistance is annoying because you have to punch through that before you even have a chance at getting him. So I'm just gonna release this guy. He'll go back to his friends and because we released him instead of killing him, relations should improve. But, you know, we, if we wanted to, we could keep him around and try to get him on our team. He is a hard worker, and he's got blood loss, which is actually really good. You know what? Sure, recruit. It'll punch him down to zero and then try to recruit him. Do we have a warden? We do. Sanfu's the warden. He will feed the prisoner and chat with him. So, we'll speed it up to speed three here, and Sanfu is gonna keep tending to the wounds all night, basically. We don't really have a doctor. He has a one stat. It's better than zero. We got cargo pods. 173 raw fungus. Yo, more steel. Just out, out here, there's just raw fungus. I mean, that's nice. We can, you know, turn it into food. But look at our fridge. We have a thousand elk meat in our fridge. That's insane. I never have this mu this much food early. I really hope that uh, Twitch clip is crack open a cold one. <laughs> Cole has died caused cirrhosis. He has developed cirrhosis caused by alcohol tolerance large and he instantly died. Alcohol, man. It's a killer. It's a killer. Cole collapsed due to a gunshot wound. Cole expired. Rip Cole. Well, so here's the thing. Because he was a prisoner when he died, we should have a rebuffed by ultimate noob. We should have a negative of like prisoner died or something, but maybe because it was due to a, you know, a disease that we had no control over, it doesn't count. Either way, we gotta deal with the corpse. We could just move it out here and then let it sit, or we could dig a grave and bury it. Technically that's better, but it does take more work, but it gets it out of the way forever. So I'm just gonna build a, a grave for coal. That is rock. There we go. And they'll they'll do that on their own. How do you botch construction of a sandbag? It's sand. Ultimate noob cooking away. He's our only cook? No, we have two cooks. We have a couple of cooks, but one of them has a passion for cooking, meaning that they level up faster. So we're gonna focus Ultimate Noob being the cook here. And Cheb taking the body away. But you put him in the freezer! What, what is the matter with you? No, 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 no. Human corpses do not go in the freezer, and human corpses do not go into the food. 
Okay, that's already been said. Don't put him in the... F bury him! Thank you. That's that's where we eat out of, Jeb. You, what, you want to save him for later? Oh, maybe he's a cannibal. Don't we have a cannibal? We don't have a cannibal. Okay. I thought maybe we did, but we don't. Um, okay. Things are going. Jeb is getting his, uh, his bruise and his crack. His cracked tibia being, uh, bandaged a little bit. Again, not using medicine, because I want to save that for when it's a little bit more important than just a bruise. Harvest some berries. And we should probably, at this point, build out a little bit of space here for our stockpile. Specifically just so that we can uh, have all of this stuff be indoors, so it's not going to be rained on and destroyed. So food does not go into the stockpile. And then we can put the medicine and stuff back over here. So in fact, let's let's do that. Actually, we should just be able to destroy this stockpile and it'll be moved over automatically. Dun, dun. The music is actually pretty quiet. Should, can I turn it up a little bit? Oh, I can turn it up a little bit. Jeb is going to have a major break risk. Rebuffed by Ultimate Noob, again! He's also in serious pain. Probably due to the bruising and cracking and he's moving around, but oh well. He also slept in the heat. You know, it is uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. That's pretty hot. We could build a cooler to keep them cool over the, uh, the summer, because it is summer. So I think we are going to need to build a cooler for rooms. So we'll put the cooler Where are we going to build? We're going to build off of this. Let's put the cooler here. We're going to build some more stuff over here behind the stockpile, I think. We're going to build a cooler. And we're going to build a vent between the barracks room and the stockpile. That should keep the air flowed between the two and relatively cool. So we're going to set the cooler to... Eh, 70 Fahrenheit is pretty decent. Jeb is going to build the... Vent. Then we also need power. So we'll build a power conduit all the way over. We, we don't technically need to build it directly under the cooler because everything has like a range that they'll connect to, but... Ah, uh, thanks Cheb. You know, it would be nice if you could actually, you know, finish the construction I'd set, I'd set for you. Okay, you know what? I know you want to go to bed, just put... make the cooler turn on! Come on. Come on. Botched construction. Oh, you know what? I think it has turned on. Maybe. I have read your, uh, your jokes, Sanfu. I just haven't commented on them. I am reading. There's just a lot going on here, you know? Actually, there's not that much going on here. I mean, do you, do you really want me to just, like, literally, uh, repeat chat like a parrot? <laughs> I'm on speed one. Go back to speed three. Uh, also, wait a minute. The wall is not constructed, so the coolers doesn't even matter right now. I gotta have them finish the walls. Give the dog a bigger box. Is there actually a bigger box? Fits smaller animals like chickens, cats, or small dogs. Maybe this counts as a big dog. So if I make an animal sleeping spot, will the dog sleep in that? Because I think a sleeping spot will, will handle any size. Wooden sleeping box. Hmm. 
It's a Labrador. I mean, that's a, a medium-sized dog. Oh. OMG, there are cats. There are cats. You can have any animal as a pet, even the boom rats, which are explosive like rodents. Um, you can have a lynx as a pet, a muffalo. Any animal can be a pet. Most of the time, an animal becomes a pet uh, if you manually choose to tame it, which I could do with any animal. I could choose to tame a cougar. He has a chance of hurting me, though. But, um... Animals can also just randomly enter your camp and be tame, and then you have an animal. I don't think there's any elks left on the map. I think I killed them all. I did. <laughs> we have to wait for more elks to show up if we want to try to tame one of those. Because, uh, you know, we turn them into 1,200 animal meat right now. Yeah, about that. Oh, you know what? The reason why this is not being constructed is because we're out of freaking wood. Keep chopping. Chop, chop, chop. Ancient danger. As ultimate noob draws near the ancient wall, a sense of foreboding overcomes her. She isn't sure why, but she feels that this dusty structure may contain great danger. Well, we're obviously gonna crack open this building and see what the hell's inside of it, because I've never done this before. Why not? And if it's an ancient danger, uh, run. Oh, you know what? How about this? Hold up. Before we do that, let's build a construction that can keep us safe from attack, like a, a panic room. So we're just going to build a quick little panic room. And in fact, let's do it. Uh, well, no, let's do it by the base. It makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a... Bit of a tunnel. We're going to build a room. Tunnel out the other side. Couple of doors. Some traps. And, uh... Couple more doors for access to everything. This will be our little panic room, and we'll even put in... Like... Some sandbags, so we can kind of stand behind the sandbags and shoot. Something like this. We can stand over here and shoot at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, cancel that. Cancel that. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't like these sand bat placements. Let's just, let's just build the room. We'll see what happens. Let's put a torch in there. We could put a lamp in there. You know, we have power. Da 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 da. Hey, deadhead. How's everyone doing? Well. So far, they're alive, although Cheb has lost his toe. Hunting cougar. Don't hunt the cougar! Yo, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. I did not mean to hunt the cougar. Harvesting berry bush. You can hunt the muffalo if you want, but honestly, we don't need to hunt. We have so much food. I've accidentally given myself just an absurd amount of food. We also do need to build a battery so we can have power go overnight. Or what? Not overnight. Uh, that's if you have a. Um, the heck was that sound? A, a solar panel. But with a wind generator, if there's no wind, we don't have power, meaning that our freezer is going to go off. Okay, who is on plant cut? Everyone needs to be able to plant cut because we got to get these uh, trees chopped faster. Ba ba. Ba, ba. And everyone's asleep. And the dog is in the bed! Okay, so I guess wooden animal sleeping box is too small for the dog. What's weird about it is that all animal furniture is a one by one little square, so I kind of thought that that would be enough, but it's not. We need an animal bed, which we can build out of... Uh... Dude, we can actually build one. 
out of plain leather. Okay, hold up. Deconstruct the animal sleeping box. Cheb, wake up. Then build a cloth animal bed out of light leather. Jeb, need light leather. Plain, oh, plain leather. Excuse me, wrong leather type. Plain leather. You gonna do that now, Jeb? Is he my, um, my highest level constructor? Yeah. There we go, now we have an animal box that can fit the dog and it's nice and comfy. Sweet. Bum, bum. And our panic room is being constructed. The doors here are just so that we can access the wooden spike traps to uh, reset them. Because if your unit passes over a spike trap, it won't activate, but it has a 5% chance to activate or a 2% chance or something like that. So having the doors just means that I can kind of go in and out without risking death as much. Good, I like this. They're doing the cutting, Jeb's doing the building. Nice, nice! I'm gonna actually chop more wood. There's a lot of trees here. We can always cancel the orders later, but we need wood, you know. If, if we build a generator, we can use that instead of wind power. I think we should build a generator for power when there's no wind, but right now this is okay. We're also gonna need to build some more rooms and stuff, but I want the panic room to be done first, because I want to see what's inside of that weird room. So then we'll continue our constructions by building a simple research bench so that we can do research, get more tech, build a standing light, build some more power conduits. We could build a tailoring bench so that we can actually turn some of this leather into materials like hats and clothes. We can make a cowboy hat for everyone if we want. And we'll build another stool and anything else that we want. Visitors. They happen to have a few items to trade. Who is my best socialite? Well, you're an incapable, you're a zero, you're a five. All right, Sanfu, get me a good deal on whatever they have. Trade with Sam. They have nothing, and they want nothing. They won't take any of my leather. They'll take a t-shirt. No, they have a t-shirt I could buy. <laughs> um, I don't think we need a t-shirt. We don't want to sell them anything that we have, so sorry. You're not going to take my pants either. They're mine. Well, that's a horrible trade. So... We're gonna have this research bench in a moment, and we do have someone who can do research, a couple of people actually. What we want is to consider what we wanna build. Batteries, solar panels, automatic doors, hydroponics, smithing, a bow, recurved bow, tree sewing so we can plant trees, beer brewing, um, double strand, which is a, a material. What is that, a horrible sound. Drug production, pemmican, which is a food. I'm gonna go battery. I'm gonna go battery, so that we can actually store power over uh, a period of time when the wind turbines aren't active. And also, let's crack into it. Cheb, do the honors. Now this could kill us. There could be like horrible bugs in here, or horrible mechanites that will just try to kill me, but you know, ideally run if that happens. <laughs> run to the safe room. Even though there's no sense. Oh, you know, wait, 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 wait. I really want to get some sandbags set up first. Ah, this room's too small, I'm realizing. I screwed it up a little bit. We'll do it like that. We'll do it like that. Cheb, stay there for a moment. I want Ultimate Noob to finish building these. Can you build them? No, you can't. Can you build them? No, you can't. All right, you know what? 
Sanfu, since you have a passion for it, even though you have a literal, literal, literal level zero. Okay, he's going. Cheb, do the honors. Crack it open. Oh my lord, area revealed. There are Scyther robotic enemies, animal, psychic animal pulsers, a charge lance, a centipede, lancers, and scythers. There's also glitter world medicine and luciferium in there. Uh, Cheb, run your effing ass off. We are totally gonna die. <laughs> We are absolutely gonna die. Uh, everyone get set up. Run. It's after him. Oh, it's after him. It ran away. No, dudes, you don't, you don't wanna be here. These are now deteriorate, deteriorating. They're fighting. We have to get in there. The, the, the passerbys are fighting the mechanical monsters. What a uh, a ancient crypto sleep casket opened up, and Staker the sheriff popped out with a with a pump shotgun and hearing loss. And Chads is here too. Hey Chads, and Lumi. Oh my God, it, it's a it's a freaking nightmare. Well, we're gonna get in there. It's a it's a three way. <laughs> Humans, robots, and uh, these guys. Hide. Get, get behind the trees. Get behind the trees. We'll do what we can and then flee to our safe room. They're leaving. Don't shoot Chad, he's on our side. He's gonna attack the centipede demon. Who's left? Lancer, Scyther is barely injured. Lancer is pretty injured. What do you have? Oh, he has marine armor. No wonder he's still alive. And Chad's has Flak vest, flak pants, and a heavy SMG. Ultimately, where are you? God, you're slow. Every, everyone kind of hide. We want them to fight each other. Oh, they're dead. Okay, you know what? Run. You know what? All of this is forbidden. Forbidden. Forbidden, 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 forbidden. Forbidden. They did kill one Scyther, but there's so many of these guys still alive, and this guy is alive, but he, oh, he's he's totally gonna die. You got food poisoning! Oh, this is a great time for this, by the way. Um, at, <laughs> Why are they laughing at me? Um, he's like trying to chase me down. He's throwing up. <laughs> he does have crypto sleep, crypto sleep sickness. Well, now I'm worried. How the how the heck are we gonna handle this? I need a grenade. Well, I mean, if I just stay here long enough. A solution will come by to help me, right? Yo, all this food is going to waste, by the way. We have we have too much food, believe it or not. It's not that bad. We can we can handle being a little bit of food. Look at these freaking jerks. <laughs> all the uh the the traders, they lost all of their stuff. It's fallen on the ground and I can't get it. The The items are deteriorating because they're outside, technically. We have to kill these guys before all these items dis, dis, disintegrate into nothing, like the gun. Would have loved to have gotten this guy. He's got good stats. We do have someone in armor. You know, we could try to go for it. 
and cracking open an old tomb with the boys. I don't think we can actually get any, uh... Oh, dude, I need steel. Well, there should be steel in the rocks. Yeah, there is. We can mine that out pretty easily. There you go. No wonder nothing's getting built. We need um, steel for the power conduits. Yeah, these two have not been created because there's... Oh, no, we have plenty of steel. We got 315. They just haven't done it yet. Jeb, why have you not... Oh, I didn't build it? Sorry, that's my bad. Sorry, Chev, I'm, I'm blaming you for something I did. Quickly build a wall. I don't want to build a wall and seal them in. I want them to, you know, fight people who pass by and then uh, slowly die. And then we can get in there. Sanfu is on an insulting spree. He will wander around randomly insulting others. This happened because of poor mood, because of an unsightly environment. Let's watch this. Sand food derived at Ultimate Noob's looks. Sand food insulted Ultimate Noob's brother's way of walking. Sand food compared Ultimate Noob's son to a criminal. Insulted Ultimate Noob's son's relationship status. Insulted his mining skill. Loudly insulted his way of thinking. His honesty. He compared Ultimate Noob to a raider. <laughs> Viciously insulted his look, and now Ultimate Noob is in a daze because of poor pain and also being very insulted. He derided his pubic hair. <laughs> how does he, how, how can he see that? He's like, my job here is done. <laughs> So when you, uh, when you have a unit break, after they break they get catharsis, they gain a massive mood bonus so they don't just go into a, a spiral of destruction. Um, but now Ultimate Noob is just going to wander around in a daze for a little bit and Sanfu's back to normal. He's like, ah, oh, I finally got it. I finally told him how I really felt about his pubic hair. We're going to have to do something about this. This is silly. I want the items before they disintegrate to nothing, but how am I gonna fight four robots of death? You know what I should do? I should like sneak my way into this building, build a bunch of traps and try to lure them into the traps. Ding, ding, you're starving because you're in a daze, you're fine. Um, so like what we could try to do is Build a couple walls, build a couple doors. And then just like, make this like another little panic room. No, uh, no, don't put that there. And just like slowly try to build it out a little bit so that we can uh, maybe get these guys to chase me down and then they'll hit the traps and then I'll die and then we can get in there and get the sweet, sweet loot. All right, so he's, he's hit catharsis. He's gonna, he's been insulted times 10, minus 33 mood. Good God. You did a number on his self-esteem there. <laughs> what is that sound? What the hell? Oh, you got shot! And the game didn't tell me he was getting shot. He got hit by the heavy blaster like 10 times trying to run away. Well, you know, that's not exactly what I had in mind when I wanted this construction to be done, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. His right little toe is still destroyed, and he's dead in five hours unless we save him. So, hey, Sanfu, why don't you go rescue this man? And do it very quickly. Like, get him and go. Get him, 
In and out, in and out. All right, heal him up. All right, he'll, he'll be fine, he'll be fine. Hey, Justin. Um, dead in three hours. Dead in four, okay, we got him. We're gonna have to, like, more sneakily get in here, I think. All this fungus is going bad, too. Fungus among us. So, why don't I make only Cheb the constructor? Ah, oh, but they're still gonna haul resources down there to build them, and then they're just gonna get shot. I'm gonna have to, like, micro them a little bit. Like, right now, if I said, hey, disease infection, all right, fine. Cheb, stay in bed, and also, you can get the good medicine now. This is, what, this is what we save the good medicine for, for when someone actually gets an infection. Shoulder infection. Oh, and a torso infection! Already tending. How does the centipede even fit in that gap? What's great is that when they die, they look even bigger on the ground. I think the infection's gonna outpace the immunity. Immunity. He's gotta, he's gotta rest a lot. He also has extreme blood loss. It's probably not helping. I think we might lose Cheb. The infection is progressing faster than the immunity is. Although maybe we're catching up a little bit. We have to use our best medicine though. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be very tight. Just because I put the build order and he ran down and tried to complete it. Don't do it, Jeb. You know what? Haul the rice into the freezer before you plant more rice that's just gonna get wasted. <laughs> Please? Thank you. Also, refuel the lamp so they're not sleeping in the freaking dark. And the torch. Thank you. We could put an actual uh, light in there, but we don't really have that much power to go around, do we? Eventually, we can build like machine guns, and ideally, you would save, you know, opening up the. Oh my lord! You would save opening up the death chamber for when you actually had turrets set up, then you could just, you know, open it, open up the wall and then just go, surprise! But, you know. All right, let's take a look. Uh, yo, you need to treat him. Uh, the infection's at 44%, immunity's only at 34%. The infection is definitely outpacing the, uh, The medicine, I think. It's because we don't have a good doctor. There's also a traveling merchant approaching. Here's the thing. Um, there's Luciferium in here. Luciferium cures all illnesses. But if you don't take it uh, regularly, you die. So if we could grab that Luciferium, we could easily heal Cheb. I think it'll also regrow his toe, but I'm, you know, don't quote me on that one. Dramine, Plasteel. We could buy a polar bear <laughs> if we had 997 bucks. I mean, technically we do. Um, we could buy some beer. You know what? Let's buy, uh, let's buy three beers. It, I have a feeling the third one is probably not going to be used, but you never know. All that beer. And then forbid it. One way or another, those beers are gonna get drunk. It's not looking good, Cheb. It's not looking good. I'm just kinda letting everything go on autopilot right now. <laughs> okay. Let's start delivering wood to these blueprints as well. 
Deliver it off and then run as quickly as you can so you don't get shot by the centipede. Good, 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 good. And we'll focus on building the stuff later. But let's get the, the wood installed and then we'll uh, bring in a constructor to do it. Actually, tending expires in two hours. Tending expires in one hour. We need to get him back up to Cheb so we can get more healing done. We're running through the medicine pretty quickly, but... So the infection, I think, is now extreme. The one in his torso is. Yeah, he's, he's, he's totally gonna die. <laughs> Unless 100% is not... What the heck was that? There's an animal that went loose. Unless 100% is not instant death, which would be nice. Get out of my house! You're disrupting my people's sleep. Okay. Tend. Infection level at 89%. 91. Immunity is only at 70%. You got shot by a charge blaster, now you're gonna die. Them having more medicines doesn't matter. I have enough medicine. The problem is the infection. They left a gift. I'll look at it in a moment. It's 100%. He died. <laughs> Cheb has died due to infection. But hey, we got 106 gold. Or silver, rather. Well, you know, sometimes life just takes an un unexpected turn and... You think you're doing all right, and then all of a sudden, you you walk too close to a. Uh, well, no one's a constructor now. You walk too close to a centipede, who is actually a giant robot, who kills you. So you know, it happens. Totally unexpected in every way. Building wooden door! Alright, you know what? Oh, yo, oh, oh, oh! Aggro's happened. I can see him starting to aim. Oh, run, 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 run! Okay, he's not following. But I, I want to see if I can... Well, we're probably not going to be able to kill these guys. It would be nice if we could. But they've got the, the range that I don't have right now. And the power. And the looks. Construct- oh, I, and since we lost our good constructor, we don't even have someone of sufficient skill to build the traps. So, we only have a level 2 and a level 2 constructor, which is not good enough. Lovely. So you know what? I could just forbid this area, I think, maybe? Nah. No, my god, you're totally gonna get shot at the- Oh, lord! It's coming! It's Jason! <laughs> Go back to the panic room! I really want to pull this guy away to the panic room, because I, oh, I already have the trap set up there. Alright, you know what? Here's what we're gonna do. Cancel. Forbid. Forbid. You guys are forbidden from going to this area from from now on. And unfortunately, all this stuff is going to go bad eventually. Like the heavy SMG, the charge lance, the machine pistol, the pump shotgun, glitter world medicine, that probably would have saved his life. It's the most advanced medicine in the game, I think. Sorry, Cheb, you walk too close to the sun. You know what? I think it's time. Dog, eat a, eat a beer. Crack open a cold one for our lost boys. Sanfu gets two because uh, he was the doctor on call. If only there was something else I could have done. <laughs> Quite inebriated. Alcohol. Tipsy. Alcohol warm. 
I was gonna go to bed and cry himself to sleep. As something just kills like a rat in the distance. I don't know what it was. It was you, Cougar. Well. It happens. It happens. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah. That's the, uh, the RimWorld experience, pretty much. Eventually, I don't know why no one's doing any researching. I guess there's too many other things to do. But eventually, you, uh, you research, you build bigger bases, you get raided. You know, instead of one guy with a, with a club, it's going to be like 50 guys with pistols and machine guns and rocket launchers. These, uh, these mechanoids, they can just drop down on top of your base just in drop pods randomly. Um, there's going to be cold snaps and heat waves, toxic fallout that'll kill all your crops, uh, wild hordes of angry red foxes and badgers and rats trying to to rush you down and kill you. And uh, yeah, Rim World, Rim World has been a fun game to play because you never know what's going to happen. You could everything could be going. Fine, and then you just frickin' get destroyed by RNG. It's a, uh... I, I wanted to kind of give you guys a bit of a, a look as to what the game entails. You have your base building aspect, your random fighting aspect. Additionally, something that we haven't seen yet is you can travel on the world map. You can go anywhere you want, and you will occasionally get quests to go and do things, like rescue someone, destroy a bandit camp, um go for peace talks, maybe someone's gonna be like, hey, there's loot here, but, you know, there was like a mechanoid next to it, I don't know if you wanna to go to that, and then, then you have a chance at fighting a mechanoid, but also getting loot. So you can explore, you can create multiple bases if you want, if you really want to expand. Or, like, go to a different biome or something. And, uh, yeah, there's just a ton of stuff that we haven't even gotten to yet. You know, we, we haven't gotten to winter, I'm pretty sure we would be fine with this much food, but you have to have enough food to survive winter, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot to this game. It's it's very fun. And I've been playing a lot of this on my own, and I would like to continue playing some more of this potentially. So if you guys like it, let me know and or vote for it if you if we do a vote. And what I'm gonna do, the reason why I kind of played a little bit loosey-goosey on this one is that if we do pl want to play RimWorld more often, then what I'm, I would do is I would start a new campaign with hard mode enabled, basically. It would be, instead of having three units with a whole bunch of supplies, it would be one unit naked. And then you have to build a base from scratch. And it's very fun because you can literally die to any reason. And you, you can kind of build a deeper story. Because right now our story is we have three dudes. But if you start with one person then you can kind of, as each person comes into the colony and gets recruited, you, you build a, a much deeper and involved story, and I kind of like that. It's also harder, and I think just a little bit more fun to kind of have a little bit of a hard mode type of thing going on. But, uh, but yeah, it's a fun game. Let me just do a quick little save here. We'll call this one... Uh, you know what? Cult of the Cold do cold Dog is fine, but let's go uh, Cheb died. There you go. He's died forever. He's dead forever. We saved it. And yeah, and you know, we'll name colonists after people as well, but yeah, that was RimWorld. RimWorld is a fun game. Three dudes in a hot tub. That would have been a good name for the base as well. But yeah, RimWorld is a fun game, and there are times where nothing's really happening, where you're just cooking food and mining and waiting for things to be built or waiting for winter to be over or whatever. But there's also times of, okay, we're being raided. They're coming in from the east. Our defenses are in the west. How do we handle the situation? And you have to try to come up with a solution on the fly. It's a lot of fun. I've been greatly enjoying the game. Here's another random event. A friendly AI from your past to name it Charlon Whitestone has sent you a message. He reveals that he has a starship hidden on this planet and sends you its world coordinates. The starship is currently in deep hibernation mode. You'll have to start it up when you arrive, then defend it from raiders trying to steal it until the startup sequence completes. 
if you can get the ship off the ground, Char Charlon will take you off this rim world to the stars. And this ship is, oh my god, it's so far away. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. The ship is here. Where's our colony? I don't even see our colony. Where the heck are we in relation to that ship? Oh my god, it's so far away. There, okay, there we are. Think. The ship is. We would have to go. We'd have to travel the globe to the other side of the planet to get there. Holy crap. <laughs> so if we wanted to, that's one hell of an adventure. However, the other thing you could do, if you want, is... And what's nice about the game is that it kind of has, has these variable um, conditions. We could just research the ship and build a new one. It's expensive and it takes a long time. But if we didn't want to go to the ship right now, we could just do that. Because, uh, you know, let, let, let's look. Let's look. World. From here... To here. It would take 45 in-game days. And the path would go following the road, going through the southeastern Rehisder Mountains, around Lake Tobe, through the Rough Sparrow Basin, around the Thedevon Forest, through the Greystone Shrubland, which looks like a desert, following the long road between the Twin Cabrera Cliffs, around the Old Calium Range, <laughs> and near the Rebarim, Rebermi Lagoon is our frickin' launch site, and it would take 45 days. That's like three seasons, so it would be all of summer, fall, and winter. It's about as far away as possible, that is correct. The other events that you can get, things like save this person, kill these guys, it all happens around you. It's like one or two days travel at max. That is the furthest thing I've ever seen away from me, but... You know, if we wanted to, we could make that our goal. Not to build a ship, but to get to that ship and fly it out of here. I've never done that. I've never built a ship before. I got no freaking idea, but that's what I know. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so again, that's RimWorld. It's a fun game. I've been having a lot of fun playing it, and... If you want, we can do our own proper campaign where I, I play seriously and try to live and we can build our own story. 